joechamber.org. What have I learned so far? I've learned that there is no one path that's right for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that is a flexible schedule so I could keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found new career training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meetings? times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Learn. Moreno Valley Schools have more vocational education programs for students. Find out more in the Moreno Valley City News. You can also find local business, sports, and entertainment news. The Moreno Valley News in print and online at MorenoValleyCityNews.com. This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. CNBC News is next, a courtesy of BuySellMakeOffer.com, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. Trouble this holiday season for a lot of big retailers. Shares of Macy's tumbled 14% today after posting weak earnings last quarter, blaming a strong U.S. dollar and warm weather for a slump in sales. But it also cut its full-year forecast and said it'll close more stores and warned about having to offer deeper discounts this holiday season. That sent shares of other big retailers Taylor's down two. Kohl's falling 5%. Nordstrom down nearly 4%. With that, the Dow was 56 points lower today. The Nasdaq down 16. And oil is back below 43 bucks a barrel on a spike in U.S. supplies. Applications for new mortgages declined a little more than 1% last week. But JetBlue is riding higher, reporting a nearly 12% spike in traffic in October. And Disney CEO Bob Iger leading the effort to build a brand new football stadium just outside Los Angeles, hoping to lure either the San Diego Chargers or the Oakland Raiders to move there. I'm Tom Busby, CNBC. There are no guarantees in love, but there is a guarantee from EH Plus by eHarmony, our new personal matchmaking service. At EH Plus, your own personal matchmaker gets to know you so well, we can guarantee introductions that will be satisfying and exciting. EH Plus goes far beyond regular online dating sites, and that's a guarantee. Visit us at ehplus.com slash love or call 1-855-930-LOVE. If you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? Switch to DISH and see what real value is. Call 877-319-6988. You can also save a bundle when you combine DishNet high-speed internet with your TV service. Call 877-319-6988. Programming starting as little as $29.99, plus access to thousands of movies and TV shows. Stream to your TV, smartphone, or tablet. Call 877-319-6988. Say goodbye to the cable guy. There's a new cool way to sell your unwanted stuff online. It's buysellmakeoffer.com. Buy, sell, make offer.com. You're not going to believe it. Join the legions of web sellers and buyers who are turning to buy, sell, make offer.com today. Never pay fees again. For a low monthly membership of $7.95, you can sell up to 50 items, and there's a 60 day free trial membership to get you started. You can even produce your own infomercial to sell your products and upload the video for the world to see. Go right now to buy, sell, make offer.com. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM, K293CF, Moreno Valley. Good afternoon. 3.02 is the time. I'm Di Rice with the latest in live local news here on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. A 66-year-old Hemet man walking along Saboba Road near San Jacinto was struck by a vehicle last night. Gilbert Nishino was walking in the roadway south of Lake Park Drive at about 9.30 when he was hit. And uh, that is from the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. No information was provided about the vehicle that hit him. Nishino did die at the scene. And three defendants in the January 1st shooting death of security business owner Richard Williamson, 48, at Cal State, in, or Cal Skate, rather, in Grand Terrace, stood trial yesterday in court. 
In prior testimony, it was reported that there was a verbal confrontation between four black men and security before the shooting over a missing ball cap that belonged to one of the defendants. The skating rink had asked for extra security for the special event, and leaving a ball cap up front was part of that. Maurice Lamont Martin Jr., identified as the ball cap owner, left his name and number so he could be contacted if the cap were to be found. Martin, 18, and Ezekiel I. George, 19, both of Paris, and Prince Topaz Johnson, 21, of San Jacinto, are charged with the murder of Williamson and the wounding of two other men. The three also face allegations of gang involvement that could lengthen their sentence. Inland Empire weather sunny and nice and sunny and warmer as we make our way through the week with highs by Friday by about 79 degrees. Today we're expected to get to 70. Right now we're at 72 past that and looking at your drive an accident is in the center lane of the 91 eastbound just past Adams Street and uh, that is due to a stalled dump truck blocking that middle lane traffic is backed up from Tyler Street and then the west is slow from University Avenue to 14th Street that is the very latest with news weather and traffic on the station that leaves no listener behind KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM Hey, Di, do you know that many people have no idea that the Carousel Mall is actually open? What? Do you tell them that that's where KCAA is located? Of course, but there's more than just KCAA here. Oh, I know. It's a totally great place for a girls outing. Here at the Carousel Mall, there's Mega Beauty Supply. And it's huge. Yeah, the biggest beauty supply store I've ever seen. And they have wigs and extensions. Then there's Backstreet Beauty Salon and Daniel's Jewelers, a store, by the way, for girls and guys. Yes, and nail fashions where they do waxing and eyelash extensions. There's Lisa's threading. You know, Mark, eyebrow threading is a big thing nowadays. I do know about Mr. Yu's. <laughs> yes, when you're ready for lunch, it's Mr. Yu's Chinese restaurant. Mm-mm, best of all, Mr. Yu's is right next to KCAA. Yes, all this located in the Carousel Mall, right off the 215, the second and third street exit. Come visit the Carousel Mall. We're open. For more info, go to kcaaradio.com. What's it all about? This is Dr. Donald Jolly Gabriel on KCAA. 1050 on your AM radio dial and now 106.5 on your FM dial. I think in technical terms that's called simulcasting. We're sending the same show over two airwaves, the AM and the FM, soon to be another one. So we're going to have saturation, which will be very, very exciting. My co-host today is Daniel. Daniel, greetings. Hello, Dr. Jolly. Thank you so much for having me here today with you on this very fine day. And hello to San Bernardino and all of our listeners out there. San Bernardino. Yeah, San Bernardino will be a great place again. I certainly hope so. So what's going on today, dude? Well, today is a special day. It's Veterans Day. That is a special day. It's, I think it's they're very, talking all about it everywhere. Very special day. You know how they have these little green lights nowadays you can buy and put up outside on your porches, porches just for Veterans Day. A green light? A green light. Why didn't I hear about this? Well, you know, Walmart's advertising it everywhere, but I sure hope that they take all those profits and give it back to the veterans, don't you think? Oh, they'll sell millions of green lights. Millions of dollars every single year to be repeated. Let's get everybody to get Walmart to give this money back to our veterans. Well, they can help pay for some of the treatments that we're advocating for brain injury. Well, we're... what's going on? What's going on oh, with I'm, these treatments? I'm, I'm going to tell you about it today. I think I'll talk about that, and I'll begin very, very quickly by just saying that we have, and I've talked about it a bit on the air, but we have a special offer. We have a film, a documentary film, that we had made on what we're doing with the veterans. Mm -hmm. We have developed a way of uh, actually healing most of them. Uh, they are mostly uh, diagnosed with PTSD and uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. It's not really post-traumatic stress syndrome. Most, most of them just have TBI, traumatic mm -hmm. brain injury, which is much easier to fix. The, uh, the post-traumatic stress syndrome is a diagnosis that is mainly a mental diagnosis. Well, well, Dr. Jolly, I think I actually have some traumatic brain injury. Do you think you can help me with that? Did you hang upside down in your life? No, but I actually had, uh, I fired a rifle and it uh, ricocheted right into my forehead and put me into a little coma. That really was We can a help you. 
I certainly but hope so. But you already so. know we can help you. You're a semi-expert in hyperbarics, along with me. Semi-expert. That's right, everybody. Semi-expert. Well, we're all semi-experts at everything we claim to be experts at. How do you like that? I think it sounds good. Good. I hope so. So, what are you going to talk about today? Well, I'm actually here to listen and to talk about what you're here to talk about today. But, you know, I, I had this question. There's this thing going on around. I, I keep hearing it, especially around your little hyperbaric center, that you actually came back from the dead or something like that. What the hell is that all about? Came back from the dead? Yeah. I came back from the dead? Uh, that's why I I've resurrected? Heard. You resurrected. Well, I think I probably am one of the few people on this earth that literally came out of the grave. And yes, that's the truth. Wow. Can you I want, hear about you, it? You want to hear about it? I, I would love to. Please tell me so that when it's my time to go, I know how to come back. Well, uh, you may go a little differently than I did. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to come and go at the same time. Oh. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> no, but we won't it, go there yet. <laughs> the, uh, the story that I came back from the grave is true. It's absolutely true. And what happened was years ago, I had. Uh, oh, by the way, we have a caller on the line. Oh, let's take that call. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a caller on the line. I'm sorry, I was neglecting you. And who is on the line, please? Hello. Hello. We have Hi, a... this is Dana. Thank well, you for taking my call. Well, I don't want to stop you from your uh, story. Being but... out of the grave? Oh, I'm going to tell my story because <laughs> I'm one of the only people that actually came back from the grave. Yes, but please talk to us. You are our guest. Yeah, well, I had a question. Um, it is a different subject, but uh, my grandfather has heart disease and may or should have surgery, but he's in the process of a second opinion and talking to the doctor. And I just would like your advice or thoughts. Uh, oh, I have a lot to say about that. I, I worked uh, in, a, in a medical center where... We specialized in heart disease. We were very anti-surgery, yeah. and we had an awful lot of good results, and I will talk about that. I'm going to, first of all, tell the story why, how I came back from the grave, and then I'll get into that. So as you listen to the show, we'll get into it, and if you have any problems and you want more discussion, you, uh, you call the station, and uh, they'll give you my cell phone number, and I'll give you the whole story again. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're and very I welcome. Love your show. Well, okay. Dana, thank you for calling. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you. You too. So back to the uh, grave story. I uh, had to, when I was in the monastery, I had to learn humility. And uh, part of my learning hum humility was to have various jobs. Mm. One of them was a job scrubbing toilets. At, oh, that's uh, great. It was a wonderful opportunity to practice humility. I, I scrubbed toilets and floors. Uh, at uh, St. Bernardine's Medical Center in San Bernardino and also Mercy Hospital in, uh, in San Diego. And uh, then I uh, worked in the graveyard, Holy Cross Cemetery. Oh, dear. And as I was working at Holy Cross Cemetery, I, I was a junior guy who didn't know anything, so I just kind of did the, the slave labor stuff. And there was a, an early morning funeral, a Jewish friend of the bishop in San Diego, was uh, uh, in the hospital, and he died. And they had to be buried, according to their tradition, the next morning. So we got a call in the afternoon from uh, Bishop Charles Buddy, and he said, uh, he always talked to, to me in a very strange way. He said, Donald, Donald, I, I have a job for you. And I said, oh, what, what's the job? He said, I've got to have a 7 o'clock funeral in the morning on the button, on the button, 7 o'clock. i got to catch an airplane at 10.30. And I said, well, I said to him, I said, well, you're not dying, are you? He said, no, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's for my Jewish friend. He told me the name. I said, okay, fine. I'll tell the crew. The crew put it down. And then I volunteered because the, the preparing of the grave for a 7 o'clock in the morning funeral is not easy because you don't have the morning or early afternoon to do it. So I volunteered since I was unmarried and living in the monastery to be the one to set up after everything was prepared which meant I had to turn off the sprinklers. I had to prepare the dirt and cover it with the turf. I had to set up the chairs. I had to make sure that everything was cool. It was August, so it was still daylight at that time. 
So I am preparing the grave, and uh, I was supposed to turn off the sprinklers. That's one of my jobs. But as soon as I padded down the turf, you know, the green fake turf, Mm -hmm. to cover up the dirt, I slid down my new hill that I had created and went down and fell into the grave. Well, I couldn't get out. I tried. It was a double grave. It was eight, eight and a half feet deep. And uh, I couldn't get out. And I tried and tried, and I couldn't do it. The ground was so moist because graveyards are watered constantly. And uh, other parts of it were solid concrete, the vaults that were next door or next grave, if you want to call it that. So I realized I fell in the grave. I couldn't get out. I had to get ready for the 7 o'clock funeral in the morning. What am I going to do? They're going to come and find me in the grave. (laughs) So the bottom line was I realized that the night watchman, and this grave was near the, uh, near the street at the Holy Cross Cemetery. So I realized a night watchman would come, and in those days they had, uh, this is in the, in the 60s, early mm-hmm. 60s, they had uh, uh, watchmen, a little bit of a, a mechanism, like a clock they wore around their neck. And there were positions where there was a pole and uh, a key from the pole. And the night watchman had to go to each pole and put the key in to prove that he was doing his job, that he hadn't fallen asleep in one place. So I thought, well, I know the night watchman comes at 11 o'clock, so I'll just wait. He has a Cushman cart, you know, little carts that are like a golf cart, but they have a gas engine, and they go put, 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 put. you can hear them. So I thought, okay, I'll wait, 11 o'clock. You know, it was kind of early. It must have been by then, my trauma it must have been nearly 9 so finally, I heard the Cushman cart, and I think Giuseppe was the guy's name, Giuseppe Alberto something. Anyway, uh, about 11 o'clock or so, I didn't know the time, but I figured that would be the time because he was supposed to be there. So, so he you up. were in the grave for I'm a couple hours already. I'm in the grave, already. In the grave a long time. So you've been dead for a couple I've hours dead. already, and I you're going to resurrect. In What's the your... grave. <laughs> and so I, I listened to the Cushman cart come up, and he turned it off because you can tell from the idol. Uh So as soon as he turned it off, I knew he was walking over to the pole where the key was. He had to punch into his thing. And I started hollering for help. And I called him by name and I said, I'm in the grave. I'm in the grave. Come and help me. Come and help me. Well, instead of coming to help me, he took off screaming. Oh, gosh. He took off screaming. And he left me. And I realized I was deserted at that point. Oh, geez. So I waited and waited. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't get out. About an hour later, a car drives up. And it was him and his boss, his supervisor. He obviously convinced somebody that somebody was after him from the grave. (laughs) So I started saying, it's Donald, it's Donald. And I fell in the grave hole. I fell in the grave hole. Come and help me. So they did. They came and helped me. And they laughed hysterically at me, which made me very upset and very, very angry. So they pulled me out of the hole. And I was rescued, and that's good. And so that's why I came back from the grave, and it's true. And that makes you the only man in the United States to actually come back I, from the I grave. I think so. I don't know. There must be others that have been in the grave. You know, I'm sure people have fallen into all kinds of stuff. That's really quite the unique one. You think so? I th- definitely Should most, I write? most certainly I think so. Not too many of us have that type of experience. Should I write a book? You should write a book, my friend. You should most certainly write write a book, book. and we'll promote it for you right here. I'll consult with you. I'll (laughs) consult with you. Falling on the Grave by Dr. Donald Jolly. Amen. You know, I published that book on the angels. And by the way, anybody wants a free copy of my angel book, it's a a wonderful book. It's really kind of artsy, uh, but it's uh, magnificently done. And the story behind it is crazy. I'm not going to tell it to you, but we send you a free copy. The copies are selling for $40 each. It's kind of an art book, and it's a very wonderful book. And I read some of this book, uh, Dr. Donald Jolly. You did? It's it's, it's Voices of an Angel. What's the uh, name of the book? Voice of an Angel. The Voice of an Angel, ladies and gentlemen, very, very wonderful book, very inspirational, put together by Dr. Donald Jolly over the the past decade now, correct? Well, it took took 10 years to put it together, but I wish I could say I really put it together. 10 years to put together. I was the recipient of the put-together. Good. But it is a wonderful book, and anybody who wants it can call our uh, line, our special line, which is 949-680-1915. That is area code 949-680-1915, and just say you want a copy of Voice of an Angel, and please give your uh, slowly and clearly your name and address, and please do not write in Chinese but write in English, please. Well, hold, hold on. If, if everybody will give me just one second. Yes, right? yes. I think I'll go ahead and make that phone call right now. 
Oh, you're gonna you want the book? I want the book. You want that book and you want it free of charge? <laughs> I want it free of charge, and that number is nine four nine six eight zero one nine one five. Amen. Correct? You got it. Great. You got it. So anybody listening who wants the book, call that number and we'll send it to you. Also, we're still having our contest for dinner for two at the Castaways restaurant, which has got to be one of the most elegant places in San Bernardino with a view of the entire inland valley which is wonderful, and dinner for two would probably cost about $100 with a little glass of wine and a filet or salmon or whatever. So all mm. you have to do is call the number. You want to give it again, the number? 949-680-1915. Once again, that's 949-680-1915. So call that number and say, this is my name, this is my phone number. I want to be put in the drawing for a dinner for two at the Castaways, and you will be put in the drawing, and we will do the drawing on the 15th and find a winner. And we wish you all luck. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so it's Veterans Day. What are we going to do? Oh, we have a we had a caller uh, talking about heart disease. Yes, Dana uh, called. Dana called asking about heart disease. Her grandfather had I don't know what kind of heart disease, but I want to talk briefly about heart disease, and then we'll do a whole show on it. Um, heart disease in our country in the '70s began to be marketed in a crazy, crazy manner. They came up with something called bypass surgery. And bypass surgery, the first year there were 22,000 of them performed. Bypass surgery was supposed to be a magic way of getting rid of uh, heart problems. Lord have mercy, I am in the wrong line of business. You are here. in the wrong, wrong line, line of, of business. business. I'm going to become a heart surgeon. Heart surgeon. Isn't that uh, the number one uh, uh, killer of Americans in the United States today, heart disease? Well, it is, and uh, unfortunately, the death rate for those who have the surgery is higher than those who don't have the surgery. But the surgery is supposed to help. It's supposed to help, and it doesn't help. I had the surgery. And you're still alive? I don't know for how much longer. Well, we're going to have to plan a funeral ahead of time. You should do your own funeral. You, will you do a video of your own uh, eulogy? You want to do that? Yeah, I th that sounds really exciting. But since you taught me how to come up from the grave, I think I'll pass. You're just going to come back? I'm just going to come back. I'll call for your boss, Giuseppe, or whoever the Holy guy was. Holy Moses. You will come. Holy is, Moses. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, I'm factual, too. I'm telling you facts. All the research around the world that has been done on open heart surgery, and this bypass surgery especially, doesn't show that people who've had the surgery live any longer than people who don't. In fact, the ones who don't, who have alternative methodologies of treatment, live longer. And I am going to do a whole show with Dr. Whitaker, who is a master at this. I, I was uh, working with him at the Whitaker Institute, which is the world's largest uh, complementary and alternative, if you will, uh, treatment center for diabetes and heart disease. And it is amazing the things that I saw in, in 12 years that happened there. And I want to bring him on the show in a couple of weeks and have him explain what he does. But basically, it's a matter of, of diet. It's a matter of the appropriate minerals and supplements for the heart and a treatment, especially uh, a treatment that was developed by Harvard many, many years ago and rejected in the U.S., mm. probably because it's so simple and would take away uh, a lot of income from the, the medical monopoly, so to speak. Mm. And that uh, this, uh, and I think, Daniel, you're familiar with this therapy from the Whitaker Institute. It's called EECP. Oh, yes, I've heard quite a lot about it, and I'm very familiar with Dr. Whitaker and his center in Newport Beach, California. And uh, when this uh, show comes about, please give all of us a date so that we can tune in to you both. We're going to do some promos so that people can tune in because he, he does magic with heart disease and diabetes, those uh, two specialties, and it's quite amazing. But the, uh, the, one of the main treatments, of course, there are ancillary treatments. So one is uh, diet, which is very, very important. But uh, one of them is uh, an electronic therapy that you lie on a table and you're cuffed. You're not handcuffed like a policeman. I don't like the sound of that. Not, not that way. No, no. We oh, thank we, goodness. We don't do that. But we lay you down flat on this table <clears throat> and we cuff your, your legs from your, your ankles all the way up to your upper thighs. Uh, in the same manner of cuff that you would have around your arm when you have uh, blood pressure taken. Mm. 
And this uh, cuffing arrangement is connected to some sophisticated compressors that are operated by a computer system that is activated by an EKG. So you're doing an EKG, and when your heart empties, the computer figures out that it's emptying, and then it activates the cuffs, and the cuffs pump blood magically and, and dynamically and dramatically from your lower legs to your upper torso. And when that happens, it forces the blood so fast into your upper area and into the area of your heart that it causes the blood vessels to expand. And that absolutely negates the need for a bypass. You don't have to take blood vessels from one place and put them in another because you utilize the therapy to expand the blood vessels. And this therapy is no rinky-dink therapy. It is even approved for reimbursement by Medicare. And they do not take things like this lightly. However, however, to keep peace with the medical industry, they will only reimburse or pay for the treatment if the person is deemed by his physician to be unable to go under the grueling open heart surgery. Wow. What do you think of that? So they actually have to go through the surgical process first before they get to this special type of medicine or, or approach. Or they have to be determined, it has to be determined by their physician that they can't do it because it's a major, major heart surgery. Well, of all of a, a lot of us already know there's all sorts of loopholes that keep us stuck into the medical system once we become ill. And a lot of us are really okay until we go see the doctor in the first place, at least. Well, you know, I, I love the medical profession, and I, I hate to be adverse to it, but it is really driven so much by money now. And it's not the individual doctors. Um, it's really the coalitions. It's the associations. It's, you know, you have these big medical associations. Mm -hmm. It's like some big charities. And you have the management who've created an empire. Correct. And, and they're getting huge salaries. And, yeah, they're working hard, and they're doing a lot of fundraising. But where does most of the money go? You know, it goes to administration more than anything else, which is one of the sad things. So anyway, that's a little bit about heart disease. But anybody interested, uh, you can call me uh, or call in the show, and we'll, we'll give you all the information you need to know. So now let's uh, take up uh, another subject. You have another subject before I go into another subject? Not at the moment. Okay, just veterans, right? Just veterans. It's okay. all about our veterans today. Veterans go through hell. And part of it is kind of an easy hell. It's, I call it the easier part of hell. And that has to do with their training and the rigorous life that they have to live in order to prepare to be a soldier. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy. I, I know that's not easy. I, I was just a kid and went to military academy, and uh, I was very, very young. I started there when I was six years old, and we had to do all the rigors and all the work and the drills and, and the calisthenics and the climbing up trees and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Well, we thought it was kind of fun, but uh, it's not fun. It's, it's hard work, especially for the veterans who are, who are training. But the thing is, really, with a veteran, once they're in a foreign country under conditions that are abominable and they're not respected and they're not dealt with very well by the people that are around them, they, they become uh, affected mentally, psychologically, and emotionally, even if they're not in combat. Mm -hmm. And many of our veterans are suffering from what is called post-traumatic stress disorder or post-traumatic stress syndrome. And uh, they're being treated with psych drugs, and a lot of them have become somewhat zombied uh -huh. uh, because of that. And we are working on, we meaning those of us who are in the hyperbaric industry, are working on a manner of treating this problem so that we can heal the brain. I was going to say there's a lot of exciting evidence with awesome volume showing the efficacy of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, in conjunction being used adjunctively to treat people who suffer from PTBI, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I also think it's very important while we're on the air to most of us know a veteran or two, maybe more. I think it'd be a wonderful thing if we all reached out to them and thank them today for our service. I myself, I have two veterans today. I could think, go ahead and thank them on the air, I think, right? Yeah, do uh, it. Uh, Daniel Gillespie from Huntington Beach, California. He was in World War II, and he is 92 years old today. Very interesting story about Daniel Gillespie. He had rescued 
a Jewish man from Treblinka in Germany in World War II, and the media captured a photo of him pulling this, this person out of this, this uh, Treblinka uh, prison camp for the Jews there. And um, now 92 years old, Daniel Gillespie lives in, in Huntington Beach, California, and the media found out that, that this Jewish man that he rescued from Treblinka lives about a mile away. Oh, wow. So they actually brought them together because this Jewish man has waited his entire life to oh. thank Daniel Gillespie for pulling him out of that prison camp. And I actually I saw a photo of the two of them, and, and the Jewish man, unfortunately, was very, very malnutrition, very thin, and Daniel was carrying him. Oh. Another one that I have, his name is also Daniel, Daniel Serenana, that is, and he is in San Clemente, California. Daniel Serenana, if for some reason you are listening to us, thank you for your service. Daniel Gillespie, thank you for your service. Daniel Serenana was a great friend of mine, still is today. He was in the Vietnam War. Uh, today he is in his 70s, and he treats uh, patients with his hands. We call him Dr. Dan, the magic hands, because he's got that magic touch. Excellent massage therapist. Anyhow, I just wanted to throw in those two cents real quick. Did you quickly. drag me to him one day? I did. I think I drug you to him one day. He made me scream, but it was good. You know what? It's 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 that deep muscle therapy, but after a couple of days, you just feel relief for the next few weeks and I think it's worthwhile for myself, anyhow. But I just wanted to throw that in for all our veterans out well, there. Thank, thank you so much for your service. And thank you. thank Yes, thank you all for the, the sacrifices that you make are incredible. And I don't think we really take time to take stock of what... It, we, we really don't. We don't recognize it. And in countries around the world, it's not something that's really recognized. A lot of people resort to the military because it's something that they might have to do in order to support their families. But over here, it's something that's really recognized for our freedoms. And I think I try to reach out to the veterans every single Veterans Day and let them know what's going on, especially now with this uh, PTBI, the post-traumatic stress studies and the research that your facility is doing. Uh, the Hyperbaric Institute at the Center for New Medicine in Irvine has some outstanding uh, community outreach programs that they're currently working on involving a lot of veterans, from my understanding. Now, aren't there some football players or something like that involved? It is football season. Oh, we do. We month. do have yeah. football players from the NFL that we're working with because they sustain brain injuries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think everybody understands you do not have to hit your head in order to have a brain injury. Well, I had that gun recoil and hit my head, remember? And, folks, this wasn't just any—this was a pellet gun. I know that sounds silly, and there should have been a warning on the box. I don't know why there wasn't. God forbid this happens for a child without a skull as hard as mine. But I bled terribly, and that night I, I threw up profusely. I was locked up in the restroom all night long, and I, in fact, I called you in the morning. I said, I don't know what to do, and you said, go to the emergency room right away. So it doesn't take a lot. We have a lot of very, very tiny blood vessels all over our brain. We get that injured, and, and we disrupt the flow of blood that's supposed to be going from to that area. Is that, is that sound correct, Dr. Jolly, yeah, something it, along it those does. lines? Yeah, it And then not only that, but the brain itself hits the inner part of the skull, and that is traumatic. And that can cause a concussion, and, either minor or And major. while our skull is smooth on the outside, on the inside, it has a lot of bony protuberances absolutely, and a lot of gaps absolutely. and things and, and, and it, you can, bridges. You can really damage the brain tissue. Absolutely can. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back and continue our discussion. Well, thank goodness my brain's almost gone. Amen. No, thank goodness <laughs> you have it. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy has only lately begun to gain recognition for treatment of chronic degenerative health problems, including stroke, diabetic ulcers, wound healing, brain injury, and many other disorders. Whenever blood flow and oxygen delivery to vital organs is reduced, healing can potentially be aided with Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy. Are you a candidate for hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Contact Dr. Donald Jolly Gabriel, PhD, for a free consultation and see if this groundbreaking therapy can help you. Mention KCAA and get a free gift. Call toll-free 1-877-423-7986. That's 1-877-423-7986. Or go to hyperbaric-solutions.com. That's www.hyperbaric-solutions.com. Call toll-free right now, 1-877-423-7986. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy.
Do you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt? Behind on your payments or barely making minimums? Do your massive interest payments have you running like mad in circles? How long can you keep it up? Stop running. Let the Thomas and Law Group carefully plan your escape. The Thomas and Law Group has proven itself for over 18 solid years, helping thousands of people like you and me reclaim our financial future. They have an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and offices in all 50 states. And the best part? There are no upfront fees at all. You won't pay a dime until the job's done. No upfront costs, no monthly fees, no banking fees. No other law firm does that. I'm a paid spokesperson, not a lawyer, and every case is different. But really, if you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt, call the Thomason Law Group right away for a free, no-obligation consult with a trained legal analyst at 800-460-9790. Call now because you're tired of running in circles. 800-460-9790. 800 <laughs> Welcome back to What's It All About on KCAA 1050 on your AM radio dial and 106.5 on your FM dial. We're now by broadcasters, right? By broadcasters. By That's broadcasters. what it sounds like. Amen. And pretty soon we'll have another one, right? Hey, I'm all about it. The more the merrier. That's what they say. Yeah, the more the merrier. So I'm told. So I we're all so. told. I hope so. So... Back to veterans and those who are athletes. There's a big problem now with teenagers getting concussions. And the thing is, these concussive incidents generally don't manifest severe negative problems for years. Mm. I, I heard in some cases it could take 20 to 30 years. Let absolutely. me tell you, when I was to that to the hospital in the emergency room, the way you had recommended folks, anytime you throw up more than three times or something from a head wound, you got a severe migraine, please go to the emergency room, make sure. my It turned out that the front of my brain, the frontal lobe, was a little bit swollen. Mm-hmm. So I ended up uh, actually doing some HBOT, and I had a little bit of brain damage. I suffered for weeks. But they told me that in the future I might suffer and become retarded or something like that or have some sort of uh, uh, syndromes from this injury that I had today. Well, you 20 know, years you, from now, you know 30 how, years you know from now, I could have that. problems with my memory. And, and you know how to prevent it. And hearing, I'm scared. Well, you know how to prevent it. Well, I know I did HBOT for a little while, and it actually helped you me. you got to do it for Because more. it is actually covered by insurance. I learned it's covered by insurance today. It's covered by Medicare, right? Well, only for, for, only for, for brain s- swelling. Only for certain conditions mm. that have to Encephalitis. be... Encephalitis. That have to be validated. Encephalitis. Yes. That's where your brain is swelling, it, and that, that's what I had. It's worth investigating the, the coverage, absolutely. But I had headaches, you know, for that entire time until you finally treated me. Well, thank God that you're yeah, not having yeah. headaches now. All right, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you. No, we're interrupting each other. That's all and right. And I have to remember to wave to Julie and Scott. So I'm waving. If anybody's watching now on the uh, on the podcast, I'm waving to Julie and Scott. Greetings and salutations and hallucinations to you. You're welcome to call in and say hello if you'd like. Mm, hallucinations. Well, we all we all need a few hallucinations now and then. Well, it sounds I might get some for free in 30 years or something. We'll free, see. free hallucinations. Yeah, from that brain injury. No, we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that at all. I went to. Uh, or actually participated in and uh, co-sponsored a fundraising event for our charitable works, uh, the Trinitarians of Mary, the nuns who do all the work, and they're all like Mother Teresa. You know, I heard the most bizarre thing recently. What did you hear? I heard that nuns are actually former mafiosos from another life. Yes. and They they had to come back to pay their debts. Yes. To repent. Yes. Can you believe it? Reincarnated nuns. All right. Anyway, I'll let you get back to Well, who knows? I mean, uh, we we don't know these things, you know. Everything is a possibility. Don't forget that. I, I remind people that their faith is a possibility, and we've got to respect each other's possibilities and and not criticize them. Very, mm. very important. Very, very important. Absolutely. So I, I, I'll tell you someday about all my possibilities. I'm looking forward to hearing them and hopefully on the air for everyone. Well, you may be shocked. Well, I'm, I, I'm used to being shocked. You know what? I'll put you to the test. Let's see if you could shock me. Well, I'll work on it. I'm a, I'm a good shocker. 
So the bottom line of, uh, of my comments were um, I want to thank the nuns of the Trinity Order of the Trinitarians of Mary for all that they do selflessly. They live a very simple life. Mm. They serve as Mother Teresa served, the very, very sick, the very, very poor. And it was a, an incredible uh, day. We, had, we actually were together about six hours for this event. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a wonderful meal. We had some speeches and presentations. Uh, we had, uh, what do they call it when you have a sale and you don't, you don't have loud bidding? Silent. A silent, silent auction. Silent auction. And uh, we motivated a lot of people. We had some good prayer. It was a wonderful time. And I'm grateful to everybody who helps us with the work that we I, do. I think I heard about this event when I was in Orange County about two weeks ago in Newport Beach, I think I was. Uh, how many people ended up attending? A couple hundred? Oh, yeah, uh, almost 300. Well, thank goodness. Thank yeah. goodness we're, getting, we're getting, making some advancements, we some are. developments. It, it was a full house, actually. We, we couldn't have held any more. Good. So do you have anything to we can talk about now? Any suggestions, any questions? And by the way, our telephone number for call-ins, anybody wants to call in, is 1-909-888-5222. Or we have a toll-free number, 1-888-909-1050. That's KCAA 1050 on your AM radio dial. You can call in and get connected right to us on the air. 1-888-909-1050. I think that's the preferred number. So if anybody has any questions or comments, you're always welcome to call in. So, Daniel, what, what's new on the agenda for the next few minutes? What's new on the agenda for the next few minutes? Well, I'm not too sure. There's, not, there's nothing severely new at the present moment. Uh, however, I would like to touch a little bit more on this uh, PTBI with our veterans and how that works exactly. We, we talked a little bit about how the bruising happens to the brain, how the brain is not smooth, the, the skull is not smooth on the inside. Uh, it rattles, it shakes, it bangs, it gets bruised. We have millions, billions of capillaries, very, very tiny. In fact, correct me if I'm mistaken, Dr. Jolly, I heard it takes about uh, 5 to 10 of these little vessels to make up the size of one strand of one of our hairs. That's, that's how right. sensitive it is inside that, the brain. That's how small they so, are. So what happens is we get these, these hits on the head. Uh, our veterans, our athletes, our football players, especially the high school football players, we're seeing it on the news more and more often. It's a big movement going on across the U.S. right now. A lot of awareness going to the, to the athletes and to the veterans. To help our listeners understand how these brain injuries actually happen, these concussive injuries, for our veterans, it could be something as a shockwave, a blast, a bang, a gunshot, I don't know, 50 cal going off right next to their ear. Well, when this area becomes bruised in our head, from our understanding, we're having trouble getting this blood to circulate to, to feed the cells their fuel to do their job, which, from my understanding, uh, the, the best fuel the source of food, of energy and life to our healthy cells in our body is oxygen, right? It is the absolute is most important thing. So when we have this bruising, this area is not getting oxygenated, and slowly but surely we become dumber, we, become, uh, we, we end up losing the ability to perhaps speak, to see clearly, to use our limbs properly. And HBOT can actually help this, hyperbaric oxygen therapy can actually help this. Uh, and the way it works, from my understanding, is it creates something called collateral circulation. HBOT, folks, is one of the only drugs that we know of, especially a natural drug. And keep in mind, everybody, that the FDA considers a drug, uh, a, the FDA considers something a drug if it can cure a disease. Because according to their guidelines, from what I know, and that this is just from what I've heard, is that only a surgery or a drug can cure a disease. So they take this natural therapy, this hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and, they, and we don't know too much about it. But the way it could help somebody who has a traumatic brain injury is by creating what's called collateral circulation. Again, HBOT is one of the only drugs, 
I have to, it is called a drug because it is recognized been declared a to drug. cure. It's been That's declared right. a drug. It's put under the control of the medical industry. You can no longer buy oxygen without a prescription. And it grows back our blood vessels, right? It, it, grows it, it does new blood angiogenesis. Vessels. It helps it helps regrow Absolutely. our blood vessels. Absolutely. So these regrown blood vessels called collateral circulation then make their way to these wounded areas inside of our head and are then able to deliver oxygen to the wounded area. That fuel source, that vital fuel source to our healthy cells in order to do their job. Now, I, why we're not giving, from what I know, we're able to sustain most almost anything the way our bodies are made up. As long as we could keep those systems going, we could actually stay alive. So why don't we give that fuel source to our healthy cells and let's just let them do their job. So if anybody wants to call in to find out more about this, to get a loved one treated, please don't hesitate. It's 949-680-1915. Ask for Dr. Donald Jolly. Once again, 949-680-1915. And that's oh, that, really all that, I wanted that, to that's, touch upon. That's the number for the call-in uh, messages. Excuse me. But if they want it live, they, they do the, uh, the 909-1050. Excuse me. 1-888-909-1050. Call in live. 1-888-909-1050. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, Dr. Donald Jolly is here live on the air, ready to answer those questions for all of you. And I am here to help throw in some fun and make some giggles or something happen. Make I'm a commentator. Make lots of giggles. We have to have giggles. And we have a, a live line and a deadline. The live line is the one you gave last, the 1050 ending, and the deadline is just a recording. And by the way, speaking of the deadline, um, anyone who has requested the film, the free copy of the film, I've gotten some thank you letters from quite a few of you, so I know a lot of people have received them, but anybody who requested it and did not receive it, Please call back the number 949-680-1915 and tell us that you did not receive it. Give us your address again because some did go out. And I understand that they went out, um, they went out on regular mail and they did not have precisely the amount of postage. So they may not have, and we're talking maybe only six out of a lot. But uh, I still want you all to get yours. So it's the movie Brainstorm which is a documentary about the brain-injured soldiers and uh, the differential talking about the fact that many of them do not just have the psychological condition of post-traumatic stress syndrome, but they uh, also have traumatic brain injury, actual injury of the brain tissue. And we can actually help them out today is what we have come to learn. There's a lot of evidence that shows that this is now, can I say that this is proven, Dr. Jolly? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's proven. As far it's as the, our documentary film, <clears throat> it is. And as far as the members of Congress uh, that you can see in the documentary film, uh, it's a, an effective therapy. And as far as the brain scans, the spec scans go, mm -hmm. and the research and the documentation, yes. It's and let effective. me ask you, has the government gotten involved in this at all? Mm -hmm. Are they raising any money? Are they providing any money for smaller institutions and organizations no, such as yourselves? Not, not, not in that fashion. But we did get the Congress to understand that this is a viable therapy, and they wanted to get behind it, and they needed the House to appropriate money to do it. And uh, the somebody, I'm not going to say who, somebody hired a bunch of lobbyists to go and uh, convince the uh, members of the House that they can't take the uh, drugs away. Mm -hmm. You know, there's about a billion, four to five hundred million dollars a month, it looks like, being spent on these psych drugs to try to treat this condition. And we can, we can heal it, for the most part, uh, with about twenty to $25,000. And, and they don't have to take those drugs forever. Right. You know, we're looking at over a billion dollars, over a billion dollars a month, mm -hmm. billion dollars a month, when we could fix the issue uh, probably for, um, oh, my goodness, well, about $20,000 we could yeah, fix yeah. the issue. Which is substantial considering the lifetime effect that oh, some yeah, of these well, and, disabilities and, and, can have on absolutely, someone. Absolutely, because you have to take the drugs for the rest and, of your and life. And mo most people don't really understand. I myself, I've been a care provider. I work inside of people's homes. I've been doing it for 10 years. I believe that it is my calling to be able to help out these people. I don't have to do it. And the challenges that some of these patients and people go through are astronomical. If you're paralyzed, for example, from the neck down, you know, you can expect to give out $100,000 a year just in your care alone and hospital bills. That's a million dollars every 10 years, money which most of us cannot afford. 
So in severe situations with people who have these severe cha challenges and damages going on, this might be that outlet that might help get some of their quality of life back. And hopefully by helping these people, it will reach out to more and more people over time. More and more people will learn about this type of therapy, which I hear in hospitals, they are charging sometimes $2,000 a treatment. I found one hospital in Orange County, that's $3,000 a treatment. Oh, my now. gosh. And I found one in Arkansas, Arkansas, $4,000 a treatment. Well, that's got to be the only chamber in Arkansas. Now, <laughs> now, according to my understanding, we only had about, uh, uh, how many chambers did we have in the United States back in 1980 or 1985? 90, 98 registered chambers that I can find. 98 registered chambers, people. Yeah. And today we have over 1,500, I believe, yeah, over yeah. 1,800. A, a, a bit, a bit uh, between 1,800 and 2,000. So yes. there's something going on. This is obviously uh, something that's working for people. And, and I actually took the liberty of doing some research on this, and I found that it's used worldwide for up to 167 conditions and that Medicare and the FDA recognized it and have approved it for 18 to 21 conditions, yeah, 18, if I recall. Right, right. And I spoke with the big shot scientists here in, in, in California who helped uh, uh, bring uh, embryonic uh, stem cell research for spinal cord injuries to the state of California, approved it with Obama when he came into office. And uh, it's really astonishing how this hyperbaric can reach out to so many conditions and diseases because he tells me, Dr. Jolly, that it costs about a billion dollars to push a condition through the FDA. At least he told me for a pill. For a pill, it costs about a billion dollars to push it through the FDA. You have any pills you want to push through right now? Oh, I have. We're gonna make billions back. I wanna. I want some to suppress. We're gonna make wanna billions back, and we don't have to worry about the side effects because when the people come sue us, we'll have plenty of money to pay them off. Well, look at the side effects. The way they're done on television, with lots of color and lots of music, and as they're as they're showing uh, this beautiful scenery, and they're saying, and may cause this, and may and cause that, and you know that, what? My favorite part. My favorite part is the lovely music that they play in the background, and these people are smiling and playing joy voyoli with their dancing, families dancing and their kids around dancing and then oh, the, they say and and may cause suicidal tendencies or homicidal tendencies that's right and death and death yeah <laughs> now would you take a drug like that well it depends on how badly i wanted to die i suppose oh good okay well that's a whole different story <laughs> well i know that my mother had some heart disease and this is a true story uh, for our listeners this is completely off the topic but since you mentioned heart disease earlier on in the show uh, my mother had a very, very severe case of heart disease. She ended up having about five heart attacks. Uh, she had uh, 12 children, all blood. I don't know if you know that, but 12 kids. I have uh, seven lovely sisters, very beautiful sisters, and four brothers. And uh, my mother, when she came to Dr. Jolly, she was on her deathbed. And she had a heart disease that, again, had caused her five heart attacks mild heart attacks two of them were, were a little bit more severe but since she has seen this man she it's been years she's 60 years old today and she has not had a relapse of the condition and this scared me because we go to the hospital and we get used to the fact that we're just going to go to the hospital and we're going to come back home well again i've been in the health field long enough to realize that sometimes we go to the hospital and we don't come back home so fortunately, she made the right call. She saw the right person. And today, she has not re had a relapse in her heart condition in over six years. And you want to know why? Because she saw a, you. I had a, Well, it wasn't me. I was a funnel. All I was was a funnel. I sat down with Dr. Whitaker, and I said, this is a situation. What would you do if you were in this situation? And he said, uh, I'd be doing this, this, that, and the other thing, among which were... So both, that's what she did. She did it. She did this, <laughs> that, and the other thing. She did massive amounts of, uh, of CoQ10, resveratrol, uh, some magnesium, uh, some other supplements that are building the heart muscles and strengthening the blood vessels, and that helped her a lot. You know what was a big bummer I learned? Uh, that she actually had to take a lot of the prescriptions that she was prescribed just to prove to Medicare that she was indeed a patient and needed the medicine. She had to take it, so she had to go accept these scripts. And uh, from my understanding, some of these scripts 
might have worked against her more than for her. Perhaps they had their usage, their need, their necessity at the time, but it's obviously very clear that that's a part of our past. We're very grateful to you. We're grateful to your good work, your introductions, whatever that you did. She's with us today, a mother of, of 12. One of them passed away, so you're actually 13. I have to count her. She was another sister. And uh, uh, my mother is alive and well and healthy and walking around today. Well, God bless her. Our, God bless us all. You know, heart disease is a very interesting thing. And uh, we got to watch what we eat. We need to exercise, not ferociously, but a bit. And uh, we oh, need. Oh, gosh, them. I have to exercise? Yeah. Why? And the heart nutrients are so important. I don't want to exercise. Isn't there a pill or something I can take? No pill. Oh. No pill. And smoking, of course, is another disaster. I'll just throw that in. Horrible disaster. You're just saying that because he saw you smoking earlier. No, I, ha <laughs> I smoked one cigarette in my life. I was 11. Uh huh. And ever since then, I started wondering how. Ever can... since then, you've been a smoker? No, I never took another cigarette. I was going to say, you look very good. Yeah, well, for <laughs> almost 75, I'm okay. Well, thank goodness you put that down because that'd be 75 years of smoking, 65 years of smoking. Well, that'll kill you easy. Yes, it will. Easy. All right, well, I want to remind everybody that we have for them the movie, the movie free. It's a documentary. It's a wonderful message. Uh, members of Congress are interviewed in it. Uh, a general that was treated who had pretty severe brain injury and was uh, not uh, enjoying his life at all. And he resolved. Uh, we're working with uh, NFL players, and we're helping them. And this is a wonderful way of learning, watching this movie. So if you'd like a copy of it, all you have to do is call our number, which is 949 Six eight zero one nine one five, and just say that you want a copy of the movie sent to you. Please speak clearly and loudly enough to be heard, and tell us your address, your zip code, your city, your state, and we'll send you the movie. And English helps. Oh, we, absolutely. Um, if you don't have to speak English, we will find someone to interpret whatever it is that you're saying to us, but English will help. Yes, English does And help. don't forget, we also have that beautiful, lovely book, Voice of an Angel, also available, you for, available for you for free at the same number, 949-680-1915. Leave us a message there. We'll be certain to get back to you, or somebody will, very soon. Amen, and don't forget to uh, call in and put your name in for the drawing for Dinner for Two at the Castaways in San Bernardino on uh, Shannon Hill, I guess they call it, and it's uh, or maybe they call it Little Mountain now. Man, you're know. giving away a lot of free stuff. Yeah, well, we do, and it's, it's not a big deal, but it's just something to help educate people. And, Good. And then the, uh, the dinner, of course, will help feed them. Education is important. Education is very, Education very important. Education is important. And we're going to be, we have uh, Miss Lovely Engineer, producer, lovely lady. How many more minutes do we have? We have four more minutes. So what I want to do, and then I'll let you have a last word too, Daniel. I just want to remind everybody to be serious about taking your life seriously. The greatest gift is the gift of life. We must protect the gift of life and our own life and our own body. We have such an incredible mechanism that is unbelievable, mm -hmm. unbelievable. And we are in charge of it we are responsible mm, for you it. said it sister you know and I mean, brother that's all right sister brother who cares it's all a plumbing. sorry it's all a plumbing issue that's all <laughs> and nowadays you can change your plumbing if you don't like it right i suppose so i heard uh, one of those kardashian crazy folks did it yeah, yeah well yeah. anybody can do it i guess we're we're in a funny world now way but, to take it seriously as you were just saying right a amen amen <laughs> and we need to understand though that we're responsible for our life and our body and everything we do has consequences everything that's right everything and we need to look at the consequences instead of bitch about the consequences after the fact when we're the one who caused the consequences and this applies to everything, not just our health, people. The choices we make will have consequences. Whether they're good or bad, they will come to you in 10 minutes, in a day, in a week, in three months, in a couple years. But it will come, and it's going to come down to a choice. Anyway, I visited with, uh, you know, we have some ministries in convalescent hospitals 
that are, are other than medical, although we do have medical ministries, but we have uh, religious ministries, we have psychological counseling, we have groups that we conduct and all kinds of things. And I see these poor people who are so miserable because of decisions they've made, especially to smoke. Mm. And they can barely breathe, and some of them are struggling with just the process of breathing. And it makes me so sad, and it's, it's, not, it's too late. You know, there's nothing can be done. There's nothing can be done. Yeah. And when we can do it, we need to wise up and do it. So all I can say to you now is that it's always a pleasure to be on the air with you. And, Daniel, it's a pleasure to have you Thank you very much today. for having me here today. It's, it's a great joy to have you here. And thank you, uh, KCAA and the staff and management and everybody who holds it together. And uh, this is Dr. Donald Jolly Gabriel on KCAA, 1050 on your AM radio dial, and also 106.5 on your FM dial. God bless you. We'll see you next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. The Rialto Democratic Club proudly announces WHO, that's W-H-O, or We Honor Ours. This is the signature fundraiser of the year, November 20th from 5 till 9 p.m. WHO honors people helping people in the Inland Empire. There will be a special guest speaker, entertainment, 50-50 raffles, and great food. It's your opportunity.